Hey, good day to you. This is Todd, and I'm just a regular dude walking through the word. This is part two of our journey um, as we're walking through Mark, but today is part two of chapter five, verses one through 20, as um, we talk about Jesus healing the demon-possessed man, uh, because there's a lot of implications with this passage. Yesterday, we talked about how um, you can't be demon possessed um, if, if you're a Christian. And we use the illustration that you have a milk carton here. Um, if you have a milk carton, it has when you buy it, it has milk in it. It doesn't have Coca-Cola in it or Dr. Pepper or anything. It has milk. And it's filled up with milk, okay? It's not filled up with... You can't add Coca-Cola to it because it's already filled up with, with milk. And in the same way, um, when we have the Holy Spirit uh, within us, uh, we can't be demon possessed. Let me, uh, we're going to pick it up. Uh, we talked, I read it yesterday, but I want to reread starting at verse 11. Um, it says this, and I'm going to go all the way down to verse 20. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs, allow us to go into them. He gave them permission and the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. Those tending the pigs ran off and reported in the town and the countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they saw the men who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there dressed in, in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people what had happened to the demon-possessed man and told about the pigs as well. Then the people began to plead with Jesus to leave their region. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. Jesus did not let him, but said, Go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how, much, how he had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell in Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him, and all the people were amazed. Now, if you think about this, something in this story doesn't add up from this region and uh, from these people. And you're thinking to yourself, what, what, what's not right here? First of all, what did Jesus cast the demons into? A herd of pigs, about 2,000 pigs. Now, you say to yourself, hmm, it's a Jewish region. Jesus was around there. Jesus was obviously walking through there. Um, obviously, there was Gentiles in the region. But there was enough market in that area that some farmer had 2,000 pigs, okay? So that's, that's the thing that, that bothers me is like you had that region with, with all these Jewish people, yet there was people that were growing pigs, raising pigs, because there was a market for people to be eating pork in that region. So the Jewish people had not influenced the people around there enough um, to, their, to their lifestyle and following God. That, um, and so the people around there were eating pork and producing pork and, and everything else, which the Jewish people should not have been eating. And is it like that today uh, with us? Are we influencing the, the neighborhood around us, the region around us, into godly living? Or is it, is it just like a, a normal thing? So it, it's shocking there when you think about it that you could have a farm that, that was raising uh, 2,000 pigs in that region. And, um, and it was just a normal, uh, a normal thing. When I was in Jamaica a few years ago, and we went there, and, and we were traveling around the island and, and preaching, and, and we do Bible schools and all kinds of stuff. One night, we went into this uh, church, and the church was this, like, shack of a church. Uh, the bathrooms were, uh, we called them shoilets because it had, you had a toilet, and you had a shower head over it, and it was sometimes a dirt floor. And um, it was like plywood around, you know, there, just kind of nailed up and stuff. But it was the church. And so we slept there in the church. And uh, during the night, they had some, some clubs around there. And uh, so during the night, I need to use the bathroom. So I, I walk outside, and I'm like, uh, maybe I'll go to this club and uh, evangelize uh, 
later on. So I go out there and I'm looking at this club. The music is, is, you know, banging away. And I look up and I'm like, oh, wow, I don't think I'll be going into that club. I, obviously, it was a, <coughs> a nudie bar. Um, so I wasn't going to be going there. Uh, so that, that club was right next to the church. In, in the United States here, we have laws that uh, I mean, you can't have uh, places like that right next to the church. They have to be so many feet away. But in Jamaica, they could be right next to it. The pastor, when I talked to him, he said, you know, we've been praying that these clubs close down. And he said, in this region, you know, since we've moved in the church in here and we've started the church, we've had this club closed down, we've had this club closed down because the church is having an influence in that community where the people are getting saved. And so there's not a market for those clubs anymore. And the owners and stuff are getting saved. I'm like, why would we want this to be continuing to run this place? So that was the thing. That pastor was passionate about reaching the com people in his community. And uh, so that the neighborhood was changing um, into a more positive place. And, and the places like that, that were ungodly places, uh, were driven out because there was no market for it. It's like, we have no customers because everyone's a Christian in this area. So in the same way, hopefully we're like that uh, today where we are uh, trying to reach our, our community and the places like that um, don't have a market anymore. So in, in the Jew, in that region, sadly, from what we read today, there was enough people eating pork that this farmer could have a 2,000 pig farm um, in that region, um, which is kind of sad. Um, but Jesus came through and cast the pig, the uh, demons into the pigs. So, all right, th that's part two of our journey um, through this section in um, in Mark uh, five verses one through twenty. So we're going to continue on tomorrow. It's going to be part three, as we there's a lot of implications with this story. So, blessings to you. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks.